Hey everyone, this is Lisa from Life in Layouts. Happy Valentine's Day. Today I'm doing a layout using the Lots of Love collection from Doodlebug. I'm gonna be using sketch number five from this single to double online class presented by Scrapbook and Cards today. When I saw this collection last year, I just had to have it. It is so cute. I am currently looking through the papers to find some papers that I'm going to be using for these photos of me and my nephew. Now these photos were taken on the 4th of July, so nothing to do with Valentine's Day at all, but I wanted to document more about the two of us as opposed to actual 4th of July. I can't show you the layout from this class since it is paid content, but basically it's a sheet of paper in the center of the two page spread and then a another sheet of paper that spans across both layouts. I did have to pull this like shimmer paper from my stash because I didn't realize that you don't get two pieces of paper in this collection. And the paper that I needed to span across the two pages required two pieces of 12 by 12 because they actually measure eight by 10. If you have an eight and a half by 11 cardstock, this would be perfect for that because you could just cut it down just a little bit. I do change up the configuration of the photos just a little bit because my photos weren't in the exact orientation that the layout called for. But basically it's like three photos on the right, three photos on the left in kind of a grid, but not a perfect symmetrical grid. I did go ahead and back all of my photos with white cardstock and I do ink some of my papers, but I actually don't end up inking the photos because I really wanted them to kind of stand out more than the papers themselves. The class instructions did say that you could stitch, so if I'm going to be given the option to stitch, I'm going to stitch. Once I punched my holes on one of the pieces of the paper and I went around all four sides of the paper, I was punching the holes on the other side and realized that I only wanted to do it on three sides so that the stitching looks like it goes across both sides of the layout. So I do have to end up cutting off just a tiny piece. I think it's like maybe a quarter of an inch to cut off the holes on one side. So one side is shorter than the other. I did go ahead and cut the center pieces of paper down because I knew that it was gonna be covered up. And since I only have one sheet of that paper, I wanna save as much as I can because that is the paper that has like all the different icons on it. And really this is like the base of the layout. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of embellishments in those two areas over there on the far left and right, but it's a pretty simple layout to complete. I do stitch on the blue paper before I put it down. And I don't really know why I did that. It was just like, oh, I'm gonna do it that way this time. I slowed it down just a little bit. Uh, I know that it's a simple back stitch, but sometimes people struggle with understanding the concept. And so basically you're just going up a, a hole. You always start at the back of the paper and then you come down and, and then go over one and come back up. And so you're going backwards, if that makes any sense. Hopefully by slowing it down, you were able to see some of the detail and realize that it's really not as difficult as it may seem like it is. So once I get all the stitching down, I'll go ahead and adhere those two blue pieces to the layout itself using my T-square ruler. I do go ahead and put all of the photos down flat to the layout as well. I purchased this class, I don't know, probably two or three years ago, and I've actually never done it. So I'm currently working through finding photos to go with each one of the online classes. I think there's six sketches in it, and so it's not a very big class. I went ahead and pulled out this word love, and I was looking for anything that had love bug on it because I wanted to use these little love bugs because they're so stinking cute. The red tag over there at the far right says this love was made for you and me and then I have that little pink tag that says love bug then I pulled out these white stickers from Mon Pon. I thought that the white would contrast really well with the red love but it kind of got lost so I decided to use some red stickers from Lawn Fawn and my title is going to be love you little love bug so I have that love you in that little circle the word uh, love in that really big die cut and then little little and bug 
in the alpha stickers. I did use my Xyron to add extra adhesive to the back of the little stickers there because they were so thin and tiny. So once I get that all down, then I'm gonna look through the collection and just basically find anything that has love bugs on it. I have quite a few pieces from the collection since I tend to buy everything. I went ahead and added that mailbox because I just thought it was so cute. I think it's the the actual faces on the items that don't supposed to have faces. So like the mailbox and the letters. I just think they're super cute with faces and I don't know what it is about them. But then I was like, ah, it doesn't really work. So I took it off and I was thinking I'd put something else there. I had the little stamp that I was gonna put over on the right and I wanted it up on Fun Foam, but I was having an issue with it not sitting right on that thread that I had used to stitch. And so I went ahead and used my X-Acto knife, but I pressed too hard and ended up cutting two slits in the tag. So I leave it there for a little bit and I'm actually gonna try to see if I could cover up the two love bugs but it just doesn't work and I end up having to remove that little stamp, which is so sad because it's a cute stamp. So instead I go ahead and put this little circle die cut over there that says, you're my love bug. It's not as cute, but it works for that section as well. So I am using some fun foam to add that up as well. Then I felt like I needed to add something to it. So I found these little green leaves. After I added it to the far right, I decided that I was gonna go ahead and add it to each one of the clusters. So I'm adding it right above the love bug on the right as well and then right below the word love on the left hand side and then I go ahead and put the love bug on top of that leaf as well. Then there was this little die cut that had a bunch of little hearts on it so I added that right above the you are my love bug and then the mailbox comes back because I couldn't find anything else that fit in that spot because I needed something that was really tall but then I was like well if I go ahead and add the mailbox and then put some envelopes in some other places as well that'll kind of tie in the mailbox even though it's not really the love bug but it's super cute and I'm just gonna go with it so underneath that photo on the left hand side I go ahead and add a little envelope there and then I add a little envelope on the far right hand side as well then I pulled out the sprinkles in the heart shape and added those as well as the enamel dots that came with the collection and added those throughout. And I was just struggling with trying to figure out what else to add. And I wanted to add something else to that bottom cluster where the mailbox is. So I pulled out my pink enamel shapes and I had these arrows. The first one, the wooden arrow, I thought that would work. And I was like, nah, and then I brought out these like sparkly arrows. I didn't like that. And then I remember that I had all of these like really long jewel shapes on them. I've had these things forever. I don't even know if people still use them anymore. I remember when they were super popular and everybody was using them on all their layouts and cards and stuff like that. So I know I have a ton of them. So I decided to go ahead and put a full one kind of swirling around the envelope. And then I cut another one to put in each one of the clusters. So I actually cut it down like three different times just to have like a little tiny bit of these swirlies in each cluster. So let me know in the comments below, do you guys still have a bunch of these like gemstones and are you using them or are they just kind of collecting dust? I did decide to go ahead and bring back those sparkly pink arrows just because they were super cute and I really liked that color. And I don't get to use pink a lot because you know I usually tend to do boys, but I felt like this one was a good collection to use that in. I'm using my journaling strip die again to cut out my journaling. And I did zoom in on this a little bit so that you can see, I just take some liquid adhesive and glue two pieces together. And then I glue the top journaling piece on top of it. And I do turn it over to rub it because I have noticed that when I rub it uh, where the words are, sometimes the ink smears, even if it's been sitting for a little bit. So by turning it over and, and rubbing it, it just makes it a little bit easier. And then I do go ahead and cut it down so that it makes sure that the edges are all the same size. I do ink those in this candy apple red just to bring in that red from that tag because that red is kind of predominant on the left hand side with the word love and the mailbox, but there's not a lot of red on the right. So I thought bringing in the red with the inking of the edges would help. And then I go ahead and adhere my journaling down. So my journaling says, oh my goodness, these photos of Eli and I are beyond adorable. We were waiting for the fireworks to start and I couldn't resist squeezing in all the snuggles I could from this little love bug. And then I go ahead and stamp the date right below it three times. 
So here is my final layout as well as some close-ups. I hope you guys are enjoying your Valentine's Day and spending it with somebody that you love, whether that is a significant other or family or your friends or spending it doing what you love, like scrapbooking. All right, if you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you wanna see more double page layout inspiration, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope that you have a scrappy day.